Hello and welcome back to the Urban Eco Woman. We are here on this glorious summer day in Toronto, Ontario. And if you've just tuned in, this season of the Urban Eco Woman is dedicated to ending violence against women. We've teamed up with Red Door Women's Shelter to first of all bring awareness to the fact that violence against women still exists. It's still very much alive. And the fact that, you know, Red Door has two shelters and both of them are really packed to capacity with women who are fleeing from violent situations. So firstly, we want to really bring awareness to it. And then secondly, we also want to raise funds to go back to support some of the wonderful programs that are being run by Red Door. So today we're going to be taking, there's diff many different approaches on the subject, but today we're going to be talking to Dr. Lori Kay about the psychological effects of intimate partner abuse. Firstly, how to get out of the situation, how to stay out of the situation, and then how to manifest a whole new reality. So stay tuned for that conversation. So hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, Crystal. Thanks for joining us. So Dr. Lori actually holds a PhD in psychology. She's also a published author, she's also a speaker, and she's also a women's coach and a Reiki master. So what mm -hmm. we really love about you and what, why, we, why I actually wanted to bring you on the show was really the fact that you bring Eastern and Western philosophies, philosophies or ideologies together. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, first thing I want to talk to you about really is let's just debunk the myth in general that, you know, abuse only happens to, you know, poor women who are quote unquote weak women. So this, the data really, as you know, is showing the fact that, you know, women of all, you know, class backgrounds, of all different socioeconomic, cultural backgrounds are not immune to this. So the first question I have for you is really, how do we end up here? How do women end up in these types of situations? Well, you know, Crystal, that's a really interesting question. And I think that there's a variety of different ways that people get here. But, you know, certainly my experience dealing with women like this and the statistics are now backing it up is that, you know, a lot of it has to do with your family upbringing. Um, and that's not to say if, if you didn't have abuse in your family background that you're not susceptible to it because it really boils down to other issues like your, your self-esteem. Yes, self-esteem, self-worth. Yeah. So really, I guess for, I guess what, what you're trying to say is really, you know, getting to the root of it. Yes, so. that is critical because unless you understand, you know, what created this in your life, chances are you're going to repeat the pattern over and over again. I think we've all been there when we're, you know, when we really like our partner and you're willing to bend and say, okay, I don't quite like that, but you know, it's all right. Yeah. And, and it's those small little incidences that begin to build. Yes, and that's also what I want to get into next. I think another really important element also is really, I really want to delve deeper into the psychology of, you know, abuse. And from my perspective, I think that the emotional abuse kind of lingers longer. So I want to kind of go into the psychology. You're, I happen to agree with you, you know, a bruise or a broken bone heals, and I'm not minimizing how scary that is, but the psychological and emotional abuse, yeah. those scars that aren't on the outside last so much longer and go so much deeper. And often they start with very small things. Um, for example, you know, someone saying to you, um, I don't want you wearing short skirts anymore. And okay. you're in that infatuated stage of the relationship and you yes. think, oh, it's so cute, he's a little jealous. I won't wear them when I'm with him. Okay. And so they start to control your behavior sometimes. So yes, yeah, definitely control is there. And there's also the, you know, the subtle kind of put downs mm -hmm. sometimes that start, that, that start developing. I think these are red flags, you know, the, oh, you don't really look good in that. Maybe, you know, you should lose a little weight around here right. or there. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think also if they say, you know, gee, you'd look so much better if, you know, you went to the gym and toned up. Uh, if you're hearing that early yes. in a relationship, that's a red flag. It's different if you've been married for 20 years and your husband says to you, you know, hey, let's go to the gym together. Yeah. You know, that's a different message. Yeah. But for, you know, a partner to say it to you a couple of months into the relationship. 
Yeah, so definitely red flags yeah. there. Red flags there. And there's also, um, there's also, we were, you sent me an article the other day, mm -hmm. and there's this, this idea of whenever a woman kind of raises her voice, mm -hmm. there's, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, um, it was an article by Ari, Ariana Huffington, and she was actually, um, referring to Hillary Clinton and that she had raised her voice in a, in a, you know, a speech or debate with um, her opponent. And what happened was she was criticized and they were saying she was screaming. And Arianna Huffington wrote this article saying, women raise their voices, it does not mean that they are screaming. Or that we're angry or that we're right. irate. We need to really get really rid of the women women are you know should be seen and not heard that old attitude has to leave but until it does there's always that message of calm down don't get hysterical when we raise our voice not when we're actually yelling yes yeah, so i think that's another important component as well so there's the warning signs and then there's also the idea of people just saying be quiet when you have an opinion just yes. be quiet so we really need to get away from that whole idea again of women you know being seen and not heard we yes. need to completely get rid of that idea 100%. so do you think there's any other um signs that we should look for that you know that tells us to really that you know we should really just exit immediately before it escalates well i think you have to watch out also for the cycle of abuse that just because um, someone isn't necessarily hitting you they could still be abusing you emotionally and psychologically so it's that you know sort of really hard negative issue coming up that you know sort of tugs on your heart followed by way too much happiness followed by yes. way too much negative You're right about that. followed by way too much happiness and it becomes a a cycle and you feel like you're on a merry-go-round yes, all the time. Yes, I agree with you. So uh, stay tuned because we are going to get to the next portion which is actually my favorite which is how to manifest something brand new. I mean is it can we is this partner of our dreams even this is, I mean is that unrealistic? So stay tuned we're going to be at the Grenadier Cafe and we're going to be talking a little bit more about that. So I also want let's get to the my favorite part which is this idea of manifesting mm -hmm. i mean is it idealistic for me to think that we could manifest ourselves to you know the partner of our dreams or the partner who we you know who we know we deserve mm -hmm. no i don't think it's idealistic at all and one of my favorite ways to help people do that is by recommending a few things one of them is a vision board. Yes, a vision. What is a vision board? Well, a vision board is you use, you know, you can use a regular piece of paper or you can go out and buy a great big board depending on how big you want your vision to be. And no size does not make a difference. Um, some people will cut out small pictures, some people prefer big pictures. So it depends on your particular needs. Mm -hmm. So with the vision board that I could see visually you know what the person kind of looks like but what about the other things like being supportive mm -hmm. and being caring me as a professional woman I'm definitely looking for a man that's very supportive of my career supportive of my personal growth those types of things absolutely I think that those are critical I mean we all want to be with someone we're attracted to but you know um, looks or beauty are only skin deep and you want to be with the right person who is going to love support you and nurture you mm -hmm. and whatever else you happen to be looking for and that's mm -hmm. where each of us can you know personalize our vision boards and I'd actually like to offer the audience mm -hmm. that if they email me I'll send them my personal cheat sheet on how to manifest your perfect man you know along with the vision board so okay so how do we manifest the the idea of the things that I was talking about like not the when I say when, when I say manifesting right so there's the, vin the vision board and the vision board is something that you that, that, that you that you look to like every single day right? every day yep every day and then this idea of manifested how does that come out of that well first of all it reinforces that you are wanting this so it's telling your your brain this is what I want and that goes in consciously and then eventually into your unconscious mind so that the two of them come together and say okay this is truly what she wants and once you once you once that happens you can see more things around you mm -hmm. that you're attracted to and yes. we've all been through that you know where suddenly you know if you're shopping for a car you see you know the same kind of car all over the road that you never noticed before yeah that's because your brain has come to a decision. 
Okay. Or, I mean, for me, I mean, I don't have a car. I live in the city, as you guys all know. But, I mean, <laughs> that could be, like, a dress or something. Absolutely. You know? And I keep looking and looking, and then it just it just happens. Is that, is that what you're saying? Like, you, you keep looking at one thing, and then, and then, yeah, you actually end up finding that one thing. That's right. That's, That's right. interesting. Yeah. So the more you stick to that vision and you keep looking at that vision board. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the great thing about vision boards is that you can continually update them as you figure yes. out, you know, well, I want someone supportive, but hold on. It's got to be more than supportive. I also need him to be, for example, intelligent. Uh, for example, financially stable. Right. Whatever, whatever <laughs> your personal, yeah. you know, issues that you want to have met by this person you know, the more you put on your vision board, the more likely you're going to be to manifest your perfect mate. I mean, that, that totally makes sense. Like you have a goal, you have an aim, mm -hmm. and you keep looking at that goal and you keep like trying to access that. It's obviously gonna happen. It's just like business with me, like for the Urban Eagle. When the Urban Eagle wants something, she looks at it, she keeps trying to, trying to attain it, she keeps reaching out to people, and eventually it just happens. And I don't think that we, a lot of times we put that much into relationships and, you know, really manifesting that partner. Absolutely. And I think that's something that you, you touched on earlier on was this idea of jumping from partner to partner to partner to partner. Mm -hmm. And you have no time in between to really take for yourself and really, you know, be able to have a clear mind and then jump back into that. And that you're saying that once you have a clear mind and you've dealt with your junk, then you start manifesting something new. That's right. If, if you've been, you know, partner jumping, um, and I see both men and women do this all the time. They're, they're very hurt by their last relationship, so they jump right into something else to get over the pain. When in fact, if you, you know, just took a little time off and worked on some of your emotional pain, chances are you're not gonna keep attracting the same person. But if you haven't dealt with your junk, it's gonna come up in your next relationship and the following relationship and the following relationship and at that point you're not going to manifest anything different because you're still dealing with the issues from three relationships ago when you were hurt and everything else so yeah. clean up your junk before you manifest well i think that thank you so much for joining us today well, thank you and i definitely think that people should we're gonna we're gonna shoot up your email address so people could email you so you could shoot out that what, what are you shooting out I'm shooting out my cheat sheet on how to create your perfect partner. That's awesome. And if you want to get involved again with the Urban Equal Women in Red Door campaign and you want to support our campaign, also shoot us an email as well. Share the video, like the video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. Thanks, Dr. Lori. Thank you, Crystal.